I'm going to show you why a cup of coffee or why a little bit of caffeine after your workout could allow even the smallest amount of carbohydrates to go to where they should go, meaning causes the carbohydrates to go inside your muscle rather than go inside your bloodstream and consistently spike your blood glucose and kick you out of a ketogenic state or a low carb state or just cause a bunch of chaos. I'm going to show you how you can use caffeine to time carbs perfectly, whether you are keto or not. Hey, you're watching the internet's leading performance and nutrition channel. New videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time with a bunch of videos also coming out in between. You gotta make sure you hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications whenever I go live. And also make sure that you check out highly.com for the latest apparel that I'm always wearing in my videos. So this video is gonna be really cool because it's gonna give you something tangible. It's gonna give you the breakdown of how you can time caffeine with your carbohydrates both pre and post workout to give you the best effect. So the first thing I have to do is I have to explain how caffeine works pre-workout in order for you to fully grasp how it's gonna benefit you post-workout. So I'll spend a little bit of time explaining the pre-workout function and then I'll go into the post-workout function. So caffeine helps you out pre-workout in a couple of positive ways. One, it gives you energy. That's kind of the obvious one and probably why you see caffeine in so many sports supplements. Okay, but the other thing that not everyone talks about is how it improves what is called lipolysis. Okay, lipolysis is the mobilization of fat from its storage form into its usable energy burning form. So basically, caffeine helps evacuate fat from its storage into the bloodstream so we can use it as fuel. But there's a third thing that caffeine does when it comes down to pre-workouts that ends up being very powerful. And that is the fact that it preserves what is called glycogen. Glycogen is the carbohydrate that is stored inside our muscles, okay? It's a good carbohydrate. It doesn't matter whether you are in keto or whether you're not in keto or whether you're fasting or whatever. The fact is glycogen, the carbohydrates that are stored in our muscles, are not affecting your blood sugar. It is simply there to be able to be tapped into when you need it for extremely high intensity activity. So when you're looking at caffeine pre-workout, it forces fat to come into the equation and come to the forefront. So simply by substrate competition, you're in this great situation where your body burns fat instead of carbs, leaving the carbs preserved in the muscle glycogen, giving your muscles a fuller look and allowing you to have reserve energy for when you need it. So this is great. Now let me reference a study so this makes sense too. The International Society of Sports Nutrition took a look at seven different subjects, okay? And they took these subjects and they had them do 30 minutes of pretty high intensity activity. We're talking about 70% of their max VO2 on an ergometer. And what they did is they had one subset of the group consume a caffeinated beverage and another subset of the group contain a decaffeinated beverage. And they wanted to see overall what happened in terms of glycogen and carbohydrate utilization. Well, what they found at the end of the study was that the caffeinated group decreased their utilization of glycogen by 42%. Yeah, they literally used 42% less of their stored carbohydrates than the other group. Why? Because their body was burning fat instead. There was also an increase in, of course, the free fatty acids, which makes sense because we're mobilizing fat, and a 150% increase in triglyceride utilization. So that's a fancy way of saying the body was able to use fats as a fuel instead of the carbohydrates, again, preserving them in our muscle for when we really need them for that maximal, maximal effort that we're after. This proves that caffeine doesn't just mobilize fat, but it actually changes the direct action of the actual muscle. So it changes how the muscle uses energy. So caffeine mobilizes the fat first and then changes how the muscle uses it. Okay, so that's my getting on a high horse talking about how great caffeine is pre-workout. But how does caffeine help you post-workout? And how can it help you, even if you're on a ketogenic or a low-carb diet, be able to enjoy some carbs with a targeted ketogenic approach? Well, to make some sense of this, I have to start off with a really cool study. So this study was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology. Then it also took a look at seven test subjects. Okay, these were relatively trained athletes, trained cyclists. And what it had them do first is it had them do a full glycogen depletion workout. So it had them work out really, really hard towards the end of the day, and then it had them fast for a good period of time, and they fasted until the end of their next workout the following day. So the following day, what they had them do is they had these cyclists cycle until exhaustion, okay, all the way until they were tired. Remember, they were fairly depleted because they worked out hard the day before. 
So when they finished their cycling workout, they were given one of two beverages. Okay? They were given a beverage that was water and carbohydrates, or they were given a beverage that was water, carbohydrates, and caffeine. Okay? And then they measured the results. And they had them sit there for four hours and they measured the results again. Okay? And then seven to 10 days later, they had them repeat the test, but they swapped who got which beverage. So they just swip swapped. The group that had the carb and caffeine beverage just got the carb beverage. And the group that got the carb beverage before got the carbs plus caffeine. They did this to make it double blind. This way they could totally see, make sure that there wasn't just kind of independent response depending on the type of people. So here's what they found. Get ready to have your mind blown. One hour after the workout, there was no change in glycogen uptake, meaning the rate at which carbohydrates absorbed into the muscle and the amount was the same between the two. Carbohydrates plus caffeine versus carbs, totally the same. But four hours later, guess what? A 66% increase in glycogen uptake in the caffeine plus carb group. Meaning the carbs that were consumed didn't just go around running amok throughout the body. They went into the muscle into proper storage where they're not affecting blood sugar, not affecting ketone levels, and flat out just making you recover. You see where I'm going with this? This truly could be the key to being able to sort of have your cake and eat it too. To be able to live a ketogenic lifestyle, but then post-workout combine your caffeine with your carbs just enough to have enough carbs to have them go straight to glycogen restoration versus having them float around through your body kicking you out of keto. So why is this happening though? Well, it comes down to enzymatic pathways. You see, the, the jury is kind of still out on it. No one really knows the solid, solid reason as to why caffeine is improving how carbs are used in the body. But a lot of it just has to do with the fact that caffeine has been known to increase glucose uptake into the muscle already, but it also increases specific enzymatic pathways that allow this to happen at a better efficiency. But probably most importantly is the increase in AMP kinase, okay, AMPK. Okay, AMPK is something that's already elevated after a workout. And it increases what is called contraction stimulated glucose transport. That means that right after a workout, you have the contraction of the muscles that trigger an enzymatic pathway that allow more glucose into the muscle. So because that's already heightened, and then we add caffeine, which increases AMPK even more, you've basically just doubled the effect of how much glucose can get into the muscle. That's why they say after a workout, you're supposed to consume carbohydrates because it's the best time because you're insulin sensitive and you can get all those carbs into your body. Well, guess what? Caffeine increases that even more. It makes so that AMPK allows the glucose to go into the muscle for recovery and not into the bloodstream. So when it comes down to that targeted ketogenic approach, the holy grail, what we're really after, we're really trying to pioneer something here. And I honestly think that we're onto something when we start looking at this. It's not just about living an only ketogenic lifestyle. If you can manipulate your body and you can manipulate timing of carbohydrates, you literally might be able to have the best workouts of your life while still maintaining that mental performance that you need to be a better athlete, a better husband, a better wife, a better father, a better person. You can have your cake and eat it too, almost literally. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, make sure you put them down in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next video.